What's up guys, Patrick here, New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel, hanging out with Rourke and Rebecca today. They're gonna give us a tour of their DIY Ram Promaster custom camper van. So join us. Cheers. Hi everybody, I'm Rebecca. And I'm Rourke. And this is our tiny home on wheels. So we are both teachers. We teach 10 months out of the year. So we travel every summer in this van. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the lay of the land inside the van. Rourke, do you wanna go take Philly for a walk? <laughs> okay, come on in everyone. So here we are, let me just give you the overview real quick. We have the cab up here with two swivel seats. This is a brand new 2021 ProMaster. When we were deciding to do the build out, we thought let's just do a new one so we don't have to worry about where the van came from. We put 28,000 miles on it, so we still got two more thousand of warranty left. Uh, this is our little uh, make space. We can sit and do work on here. We can cut up the veggies here. This is our sweet little kitchen. We have our induction cooktop in this drawer, uh, which I'll put out right now. <laughs> uh, and then we have our fridge, which I'll show you soon. We've got our shower and our toilet. We've got our closet. And then this is our dining room that also converts into our bed space. So let's get into a little bit more detail, yeah? Okay, so I talked about this cab space. We don't need to know all those details, but this is our sweet little feels like home space. We decided to put pictures. And if you wanna zoom in on these pictures, we just started collecting these in our couple years of travel. So we have most of the places we've been. We went down to Baja, Mexico, we went all through Canada, across the US, the Grand Canyon, maybe like five times. That's our favorite spot. So we were so used to finishing our very last teacher day of school. And then we would just go right out to the van and then we'd come back before teacher in service at the end of August. So we had so much fun with this. Um, and this is funny, these are our flowers from our wedding almost two years ago. I don't, we kept them. Not these, but these. <laughs> okay, so down here, I'll move around. We have our heater space. This is our Robasto heater that we can keep on a timer. I'll show you that switch. And then these drawers. So when we were deciding what to put here, we thought maybe we wanted to put in two more seats, you know, for visitors, kids, whatever. And then we decided, let's give us more space right now for some of our bigger appliances. And then we could remove this at any time if we wanted to. So I'm gonna pull out some of the drawers. This one is a mess. We've got this beautiful coloring book, by the way. <laughs> we love this. <laughs> um, and then this has all of our favorite games. So if you think we've spent hours and hours playing games in this van, we absolutely have. And then, so they magnetic lock, but we added these latches because since we have such heavy appliances in here, I'll show you our, you know, we got our Instant Pot and air fryer. If we hit big turns, sometimes the magnet would come undone. So the latches, they're pretty low key and they do the exact job they need to. And then the bottom we have, you know, our shoes and all of our doggies, food and her toys and all of that stuff. So plenty of storage space. We never even really filled it like we thought we would. This is regular shiplap, painted white. Um, we have it going all across the top. We have this fan, it's winter right now. <laughs> so we aren't, you know, we're gonna keep it insulated. So we keep this up and it keeps it really quiet while we're driving too. Um, underneath all of the walls, we have Havelock walls. So we have the really nice and natural stuff. So moving down to the floor, this is our life proof wooden floor. Um, it's awesome and it is so easy to clean. You can see some of the dirt right now from our doggy, but it's really easy to dust up. So then we have our galley kitchen. We installed these little bowls for our dog. They can easily be removed though. And then we have this hook. So if we were ever in a space, let's say a campground where we needed to maintain Philly on a leash, then we would simply hook her up there and then she could still be free to roam. So let's go into the kitchen. We have our water spigot for drinking on a three-step filtration system underneath. We have this water that comes out and we can wipe our feet, whatever. So it comes around if we need. And then this sink is so deep and so helpful. So it's fun to, you know, hide dishes if we don't feel like doing dishes that night. 
This, we have a really nice butcher block. I believe we got it from Home Depot and then we just finished it with a uh, food grade finish, which was really helpful. And then this, this is what Rourke will tell you for some reason is his favorite feature of the van, this extremely convenient trash can. <laughs> and I don't know why, but it fits perfectly. You can see some of our plumbing underneath and then that's our three-step water filtration. So I guess we'll go into the fridge here. This fridge fits, let's say five days of groceries, whatever we need. We even have our little freezer space, which we were really excited about because it gives us space for ice cream, even though the ice cream never really lasted anyway, <laughs> because we ate it. <laughs> okay, so then we have this huge space for all of our kitchenware. We have some of our stickers of some of the places that we visited over here. Now we have three different drawers of three different sizes. So we even measured our air fryer before we built this drawer to see that it would fit. So this one is our deepest drawer. We have this for all of our cans, really anything we could need. There's so much space left over. We have a smaller one. We keep our pots that work with the induction cooktop. And then this top one, another ton of space in here. So on the back, we put this really sweet backsplash. It's not real tile because we didn't want anything to be weighed down. Uh, we have our mugs and then, you know, the classic fruit hammock. Over here, these are our different outlets. So this is really easy. We have one here to be able to use stuff like our induction or our Nutribullet. We also have one over here if we wanted to cook. So this is if we are just charging our cell phones or anything like that. And then we also have our 12 volt. All right, moving back to the kitchen area, we have this for more food storage and all of our dry snacks. This is our board that Work is going to explain because he's a little better at it, but it's our screen. This pulls out for easy service access. And then uh, we have four big drawers up here that open up for whatever we need. And let's move on to the bathroom and shower. So here, okay, it looks small, but it is actually precisely what we need. Now, Rourke is six foot. Okay, he's 5'11 and three quarters, but he got in when we were framing the shower to decide the precise amount of space so that we could still remove this front part for new seats if we needed. And we have a Laveo dry flush, which is kind of like a diaper genie if people aren't as familiar with it. Uh, this comes out if we just need, or if we need to wash off Philly at all, this does stretch to outside the door. So this is just our perfect little shower for however we need it. And this is the Nautilus self-drying shower door, which is extremely necessary and convenient. So the walling here, it feels like tile and it acts like tile. It's palisade, so it's a little bit lighter, but extremely durable. So the toilet is removable whenever you want to take a shower. You simply take it out, put it into this open space here. And then the drain in the shower is connected to the drain with the sink, which all goes down to the gray tank right underneath the van. So they each have their own tank and then they connect to uh, this ball valve, which releases the gray water. And then we only use natural products anyway, but yeah, you always want to be aware of where you are dumping the water. So Rourke is going to explain the ins and outs of these two benches, but this in short, it includes in this bench seat, our 33 gallon water tank, which is where we get access to, you know, the shower water and the sink water. Okay, lastly, for this part of our home, we have our closet. Check out this full length mirror. Hello. <laughs> so we have a nice full length mirror and then this fits even more clothes than we could need. The first year with the van, we didn't have all of these shelves and then we felt like we weren't maximizing space. So we just added a couple more shelves and it pretty much fits our entire wardrobe. Welcome to our living space now. So this is our beautiful little seating area. We have our tabletop on a lagoon mount. This is where we sit for most of the day and afternoon probably playing Yahtzee, <laughs> but anything that we want, this is where we eat and relax. I'll show you some of the cushion area. So this will become a bed, which I'll explain in a moment, but we have this really nice heavy duty and really soft cover. And we actually just chose to purchase a mattress and then we cut up the foam. So we knew we would maximize comfort. So it's sort of like it's two twin beds if you want, but it's also a bigger bed, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, before that, let me show you our dimmer switch here. 
So we have this backlight on a dimmer, which we actually ended up utilizing a whole lot over the summer if we're just reading in bed and we wanted the rest of the lights off. And then we charge our phones back here overnight when we wanted air or we wanted to, you know, take a peek at the stars. You could easily open this up. This was Philly's favorite part because she could get the evening breeze right next to her bed space. And you're probably wondering what this big metal thing is this is our projector screen okay totally underrated in our van um we will admit that when we were bored of playing yahtzee and we wanted to watch a movie we had this projector that was just stunning and would project i think we probably watched all of game of thrones on this uh, we watched everything late at nights or midday when it was 120 degrees in the grand canyon we would do our hike super early in the morning and then sit and watch tv for the hottest part of the day and it was perfect so this screen was just such a winner for us i think we bought it a day before leaving what a great purchase let me give you a little bit of background about the van um, this made me think of it because one safety first so my mom was a huge supporter of us being able to build this van and Rourke's parents were huge supporters of like physically building it and Rourke's dad and Rourke of course are huge safety people so we were not going without a fire alarm the co uh detector we have a fire extinguisher you, you will see how well the 33-gallon tank is strapped down in the van. It's not going anywhere. We didn't want any enclosed spaces. So easy exit out the back, easy exit through the front. Like we, everything was thought about for doing this. Um, when we were building, it's a funny story that's not that funny because it was so stressful. Since we're both teachers, we teach um, near where we were living, but where we were building the van was... I think like two hours south into Delaware because we don't we don't have a garage so the van was stored in southern Delaware we were leaving like 3 p.m. on the dot on Fridays and then driving down to Delaware staying there until Sunday night building the van and then all of this we had a deadline of the night before our wedding like we were getting married in between two trees in the Poconos and we needed the van to be done because we're like all right two month honeymoon so it was super stressful but it was a lot of fun building the van is such hard work and I'm laughing right now because I think work is listening as he does on a walk with Philly and he did most of the building <laughs> so I'm acting like I was super stressed but Anyway, it was just fu such a fun experience that he'll tell you about when he's talking about the benches. So let's get into what the bed is like. So I will show you how this is built, but it's actually very, very easy. So easy that I'm going to be the one to show you. So it's on a lagoon mount. You just take the arm and leg off here. You loosen it and then this comes off the tabletop. You can tuck it right into the edges. So that becomes like your frame for the bottom of the bed. And then you just move the back cushions right into the middle. And it is wider than a queen and then a little bit shorter than a queen. So you can sleep either way. I think our first summer we slept going one direction and then the next summer we slept going the other. So it really doesn't matter. And again, Rourke is just about six feet tall. So he was able to sleep with total comfort. Rourke is now going to come around the back. I'll open up the doors. He's going to show the electrical and the plumbing. All right. So let's take a look at the electric bench. So Rebecca is going to just help me get this bench open. So all you have to do is you move the cushions and we can put those up front right now. And then in here on the right side, we have all of our electric. So it's a nice tight squeeze. All right, so in here is our electrical bench. So we have 400 amp hours of Battleborn lithium batteries. These go to our main fuse, which goes to our main kill switch. So if you need to turn the entire system off, you can. We have our Lynx distributor here, which connects everything to our batteries. So we have our multi-plus multi inverter charger there, uh, which not only converts 12 volt to 120 volt, so we can use our outlets but also so we can charge uh, via shore power as well. Uh, in the back right there, we have our DC to DC charger. So you can also charge via the alternator of the car. And then going, moving forward, we have our Servo GX. So this is what takes the data from each part of the system and shows it up on our GX touch. That includes things like the solar charge, how many watts we're getting. You can turn the MultiPlus on and off. It tells you the temperature of the bench as well as the water level of each of the gray tanks. We also have our uh, breaker for our solar panels and our solar panel uh, smart solar charger right there. Up on the roof, we have 600 watts of solar. 
We have never had to plug in via shore power ever. Uh, the solar has just worked miracles and it's rare that our battery bank ever gets under 50%, which was something we were really worried about. So that's why we went all out with the electric. Becca might've mentioned earlier the Wabasto heater that we have. We also have our water heater, uh, our Bosch water heater, which is also on a timer switch right there, um, as well as our Fresair air cooler up here. Um, which we will get into when we open up our water bench. So when we swivel that over, we can move our pillows here. So same thing, just moving our cushions that Rebe Rebecca's gonna help me with here. Um, and then on this left side, we have our entire uh, plumbing bench. So when we open this one up, we have our 33 gallon water tank there. Um, that goes to our sea flow pump. Here's our water heater. Right now it's unplugged because the whole van is winterized because it's pretty chilly out. Uh, we have our hot and cold water on separate ball valves. And then here's our Fresair separate water tank. It's seven gallons. So that's what pumps the water up to the Fresair unit. Uh, and then that is cycled around the pine filter, which cools the van up to 25 degrees. Um, we've been in the middle of the Grand, or not in the middle of the Grand Canyon, but we've been to the Grand Canyon. We've been to Utah where it's been 115 degrees outside and uh, it's gotten it to be nice and, and cool in this back bench area. So we were really happy with the Fresh Air unit. And then Patrick, if you wanna come around back, I can show you some more. All right, so welcome to our garage area. We have ample storage back here. Uh, right here is our nice storage uh, section that we keep our life vests, water filter, things like that. We have two separate garage areas. So up top is more of our utility storage. So this is like our shore power hookup, our uh, toolkit, things like that. And then on the bottom, this is why we raise the dinette area seven inches tall. This goes the length of the area. So we keep longer things in here, yoga mats, our inflatable canoes in there, our uh, lawn chairs as well and camping chairs. Um, so we never really run out of space to put things back here. Uh, right here we have our hose and our water hookup as well. So that's easy access to fill in. Uh, that was really important that we had that secure in the van rather than a water hookup on the outside. Brooke and Rebecca, thank you very much for taking the time today to give us a tour of your awesome camper van conversion. Can you tell our viewers a little bit like about your most like, amazing camping experience? Yeah, we just had so many. <laughs> Come here, girl. We had so many. I mean, it was just the idea of having our home with us. Like we could wake up five feet from water in Mexico or waking up to the birds outside of the Chicago Zoo. Like. Anywhere we wanted to go, we could just do, and we could not stop talking about how lucky we were and how special it was to share these experiences with each other. Yeah. <laughs> now, off camera, we talked a little bit about your toilet, the Laveo dry flush toilet. And you guys, like, actually give me a tip because I was like, you know, you have to replace a cartridge. It could be expensive, but there's, like, hacks for that, right? Yeah, okay. He told me not to mention anything with toilets. He was like, don't do this. But... You honestly don't need to flush the toilet every time. Like we <laughs> could go for, you know, peas and then you use this pea powder and it solidifies it. I mean, is it gross? Yeah, but you can't smell it. So you just keep the toilet shut. I would say my favorite part of this van, you said yours was the trash can. I told him that earlier. My favorite part is just having a toilet. You just, if you know, you know, like having this stress of needing to go to the bathroom and you're on the road, the toilet, go with the Laveo. <laughs> it's a great toilet. A lot of van builders use it. It's smaller than some of the compost style toilets and it's less work than a cassette toilet. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And the way that it wraps up now, again, I wasn't doing that. He was doing that part, but the way that it wraps up and you could take it out of the van. And since it's totally contained, you can dispose of it anywhere, but obviously you dispose of it responsibly. Absolutely. That's yeah. the most important thing. <laughs> yeah. Now that you've built it, and you've done some awesome travels. What's next for you guys? Yeah. So, I mean, we really want to build another. We had such a great experience. We learned so much um, with a lot of help from my dad as well. Uh, but the the next move is to, to build another. We're thinking about selling this one and then hopefully buying a house oh, yeah. at some point too. So just moving <laughs> on uh, to the next step in life, but I mean, with another van. And if we had to do this one over, we're always asked like, what's something we would change? And I think we would do the exact same thing over again. This one just has 
everything we need, everything we could wish for, um, just with all the research and time we put into it um, after school and on weekends, uh, we would really just do the same thing again. So on our next build, we'll probably do uh, pretty much the same layout. Well, that's great. And I like the fact that you start off with a brand new van chassis. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people buy used vans, and that's, that's fine. You could get a good deal on them. When you buy a brand new one, you know exact the history of it, how it's maintained. If you want to sell it one day, you could tell the whole service history of it. So there's a lot of value in that. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's still under warranty, which is nice, mm -hmm. too. So just, I mean, everything we've done with it has been at, like, the Dodge Ram mm -hmm. dealership and all that. So... Uh, yeah, just buying brand new gave us that peace of mind, um, and we bought it at a time, too, when the used ones were just about the same price as new ones, so it was kind good. of a no-brainer for us. Um, we slept at the Dodge Ram that one time. We needed yeah, to... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, don't <laughs> put that in there. <laughs> we've, slept, we've slept everywhere. We, yeah, we really have. <laughs> and I got a lot of viewers that are researching building a van, and they're kind of looking at videos, getting some ideas. Any feedback on the Ram Promaster in comparison to like the Transit and the Chevy van and the Sprinter van that are available on the market? Like, why'd you choose this chassis? Yeah, I mean, just compared to the, to the Sprinter, the price, but also like the box, the 90 degree angles made it really easy to build out um, and just put everything in here that we wanted. Uh, we never were not one to go off roading, especially with a big van. I just didn't think that was safe anyway. But I mean, we've been on the beach in this thing. We've We've gotten through snow in this. Uh, we also have max tracks, which have yeah. which have gotten us out of being stuck on the beach before just right away. So, I mean, this thing is just, it, it's gotten yeah. us everywhere, and we just have no complaints and no real limitations with it, yeah. um, even though it's not a four-wheel drive. Yeah. And I get a lot of questions from viewers uh, traveling with pets. Can you tell us the experience of how that's been for <laughs> yours? Yeah, oh, she lifted her head at that. This girl just loves to travel. <laughs> and if you want to travel with a pet, you give them that experience of their lives. Like, first of all, it's so easy because the world is her backyard. So anywhere we slept um, and the things that we did, we had her in mind. Now, here's the thing. We're not big, you know, shoppers, indoor things anyway. So we never felt restricted. But it is true that if you're going somewhere, you have to be aware of where your dog is and isn't allowed. Now, were we bringing her into every grocery store? Absolutely. <laughs> so we were doing all that stuff with her anyway, but everything is outside, so she just had the best time of her life. We took her tubing. Um, yeah, I mean, just everywhere. <laughs> well, awesome, Bill, guys. Thanks yeah. for sharing it. Ram ProMaster 2500? 3500. So you got all the payload in here. Extended. Yep. 400 amp hours lithium, 3000 yeah. watt inverter, 600 watts of solar. This thing's set up. I'll make sure I put a link in the description if you guys decide to sell this. This is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us. Thank, Thank you, Patrick. you. Thank you.